Morning ladies and gents, Jimmy here and welcome to British Summertime. Again, glorious. It's like 12 degrees right now and I'm freezing. This is going to be the first Club 100 video we've had for a little while. Um, I have actually been to an event already back at Clay Pigeon. You're probably wondering, Jimmy, where's the video of that? Well, here's a very, very short recap of what happened there. Shadow Realm Racing, baby. Jimmy, 10th, uh, row 5 on the left. First yeah. top 10 quality. Yeah, because it's, it's sort of... Awesome. Go. <laughs> So this time around, hoping for a slightly better result. Pace was there, um, but as always, those little mistakes were creeping in. Today, we are at Rye House, a circuit that I've driven for about half an hour, uh, about two, three months ago. Really fun circuit, I really enjoy it, but as you can probably see, it's kind of patchy wet at the moment, as it pretty much always is for Club 100. But after practice, I'm pretty sure that'll all be gone, and we should have, hopefully, a dry race. Uh, championship situation is pretty bleak for me, uh, having not really scored a point yet, and it's round four. So, like, this round is going to be super important if I want to salvage anything. So, I need a good finish here. I'm about to go for practice, gonna go find out what the track is like. Should be fine, it's drying up now. Uh, I think we'll dry it up now while we're out there. So, qualifying coming up, very important. Need exactly what I had last time. seems to have the ability to retain water like no other track that I've been to so far so if you did make a mistake like this poor guy you ended up spending the best part of a session trying to remove your cart from Shrek's swamp this means that qualifying was trying to dodge people going off and then trying not to go off yourself which was pretty fun 19 not bad man not bad 30 out of 30 so midfield yeah you sort of put the hang of t1 by the end of it it was just you got to send it in and be brave and hope you catch it on the exit that was basically it but um the middle sector was really difficult because breaking into the first hairpin there's a big puddle of water right on the outside people were going wide off there because if you get a really good run out of the uh out of the stadium section if the cart slides on the power people were going too wide hitting the puddle bringing loads of water back in so next time you go through there and you'll find that you hit the brake and you hit water and just go straight on so uh, it's a bit challenging to clean that but i'm just happy to get around there without uh without spinning really i'll save that for the race just going to the grid now, we qualified P13, so uh, about similar to what we did at Clay. More people in this race, so 30 instead of 26, so hopefully we can just go forward. It's got to keep it clean. That's going to be the important thing. Don't spin. Don't make any issues. If I get through in one piece, I'm pretty sure I can get you know, top half of the build. Fairly easy. Good night, mate. See you later. So race time, I was to start on the inside line, which is usually a good place to start, but unfortunately due to the sort of wet, dry conditions we had, the inside line was wet. So I was really cautious at the start, and uh, you can't be cautious in a kart race. So to say I got completely mugged down to the first corner, a little bit of an understatement. <laughs> Edwards ahead in the yellow helmet he's someone that I knew I'd be close to on pace around here at Rye House so to see him just sort of rocket up the grid and make up a few positions on me just like that it was a bit frustrating but it's an hour race lots of time to make up places and I knew once I got up to speed that I'd be quick <laughs> and qualifying there was still quite a bit of water down the circuit so there were several lines into each corner which meant the first few laps were really just more of an experiment to see where was quick and where was slippy i knew though that i was quicker than the two guys in front and that i needed to get by sooner rather than later <laughs> Who had a 
great start, starting to actually fall back down through the field again. And it ended up causing sort of traffic. I couldn't find a way by. The guys in front were having the same issue. And then I found myself just sort of shuffled to the back of this little pack and not really having anywhere to go. And I knew that the guys in front would get away if I was stuck for too much longer. And with Edward struggling, I went for a move that I probably shouldn't have. <laughs> Yeah, number 42 penalty flashing up on the board above the start finish line and because I'm I don't know oddly used to now serving black flags which isn't a good thing trust me something I'm definitely trying to work on I came straight to the pit lane and this was my first mistake of the race because a penalty when a display like that on the board is not a stop go it is a penalty applied at the end of the race so not only in my smooth brain wisdom did I get that penalty at the end of the race, I also lost all the time I spent driving into the pit lane, waiting, turning my car back on again and getting back out on track, somewhere probably in the region of 20 to 30 seconds. To say I was frustrated by this turn of events would be a little bit of an understatement, it's entirely my fault, there's nobody else to blame, but I just thought to myself, you know what, you've thrown away another race here, but I recomposed myself, there's no point whining about it, because it's not going to change anything, I just went straight back out there, got back up to pace nice and quickly, and ended up following around this fellow in the yellow helmet, which actually turned out was the class leader for my class. So I was fighting for the lead, just uh, just a lap down. <laughs> now there is a mandatory pit stop in these races for chain lube to make sure the chain doesn't do the big eat of the rest of the car. And I was thinking to myself, right, I've got to just basically go as long as I can now in clear air. But as the race went on, me and the class leader started to catch some other cars, including a recovering Edwards, who was trying to get back up to speed, of course, after I sent him into Shrek Swamp. for Edwards here because he must have been thinking that he was safe but nope here I was right back on his rear bumper again but this time I was not going to be making the same mistake I made earlier on in the race <laughs> got a bit lonely 30 cars on circuit and I managed to find myself a massive bubble which wasn't a bad thing given that I knew I had some pace so if I just drove around on my own and did that pace I would be looking good if anything happened a bit later on I did still own my mandatory pit stop so my plan was as soon as I caught any traffic I would come in take the stop and then just go from there so after finding my way past a few more carts and just generally running for quite a long time in the clear air, I took my mandatory chain loop stop. But little did I know as I exited the pit lane that things were about to get a lot more interesting. I think really well demonstrates what Rye House is like to dry after rain. All it took was one person to go slightly offline, bring that standing water back onto the racing surface, and just like that, five people out of control into the wall. When you touch anything that isn't a dry surface with these slick tyres, it's like driving on ice. So I was kind of surprised to see people hacking it in there with the yellow flags. I guess there'll always be some people who'll always do that. The result of this crash was that for the first time ever, I was about to experience the safety cart. This was a little bit of a blessing in disguise for me because it really bunched up the field. And whilst I still hadn't gained back the time I lost earlier on, this really helped me get close to the carts in front of me. So as I furiously tried to keep some heat in the tires, I had one goal and that was go as far forward as possible.
a proper free-for-all. One missed apex and you lose a position just like that. And that even happened to me a couple of times in these later stages. But I can't tell you just how fired up I was at the end of this race here. I knew I wasn't really in for a good position, so I was just really out there to have fun and try and claw back as many places as possible. I, I was loving it. This is what Club 100 is all about for me. Unfortunately, I found myself caught up in a small incident, which means a couple of guys that I had caught and passed previously had managed to get back by but time was starting to now run out in the race of only a few laps left so i thought you know what send it what's the worst that can happen <laughs> Again, I got a penalty at the start and I thought that meant coming to the pit lane because that's what penalty means and it didn't, it was just like a time penalty at the end for, so I came in the pit lane and lost about 30 seconds. But the, luckily the safety car sort of brought us back together at the end, I made up a few places but uh, I'd need to apologise to someone, the guy I binned at the start because I put him in the water mate, but otherwise it was okay, I think. Good pace. Andrew Mather in 21st place, Alex Edwards 20th, Jimmy Broadbent 19th today. Steve Moody finishing 18th, Easy Scratchy Racing. Your winner, driver number 54, Jack O'Neill. So I don't really know what to say. Um, so to bring you up to speed, I got a sixth place penalty for, to be fair, it was a bit of a murder down at T1. Um, and then you plus, of course, the fact that I came into the pit lane because I thought that was a black flag because my brain is very smooth. I was faster than the guy who won. I overtook the guy who won at the end. I could have won Clubman today. I could have been well within the top lot of the pace. <laughs> This is it though, isn't it? This is it. But I kind of feel happy knowing that the pace was there again. We couldn't, be, couldn't be on the trophy right now. But to be honest, think about where we were last year. Well, next, next event out is Lid, where we started last year, pretty much. It's been almost a year. Well, no, it's been just over a year since our first race. And to go from being at the back of the field with no chance of anything to, you know, if I cleaned it up, I could have won. My class, of course. That's uh, that's something. So, yep, keep that in mind. Um, definitely nowhere near the top top guys yet, but um, getting near the top of clubman, gotta just keep going. So, lesson to learn: don't murder people. So that's it here then from Right House. Again, lots to think about for Lid coming up next time. If you enjoyed the video, enjoy the fact that Club 100 is back on the channel, then I appreciate you tapping the like button, subscribe as well, and of course, check out the Club 100 website. They've been very kind to me. I've come in here and been a bit of a lout, really, and they've been very nice to me, regardless, especially with, of course, Steve here uh, behind the camera. Thank you, Steve, as always. Uh, take care, have an awesome day. See you next time.